Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Glad you're with us. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And today we're going to get right on it. It's, uh, it's been a wild week of elections. It has. We, uh, for a change, uh, tried to schedule something that was pretty uh, topical uh, when we air the show. Uh, last Tuesday there were some significant elections around the state and elsewhere. And we're going to have our resident guru on politics and elections come in and tell us what he thinks about the, what these results mean. That's right. We'll look at the local races in Oklahoma City and Tulsa, the statewide races, see how the shift between Republicans Republicans and Democrats are acting at the at the state legislature and it'll all happen today with Mike McCarvel on the verdict. Prices at the pump are hitting new highs this week. In other news, gasoline is expected to top four dollars a gallon this week. Expect drivers seeing sticker shock at the pumps. OPEC has raised the price of oil again, and Wall Street worries. Well, a full tank of gas is going to drive us back. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we are really pleased to welcome back to The Verdict the oldest friend we have, not in uh, years of age, but oh, in you really know how to hurt a guy. number of appearances. <laughs> uh, Mike uh, McCarville is our guest today uh, for his 18th appearance on The Verdict. We obviously love him and appreciate all he has to tell us. He's going to tell us uh, 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 during this segment uh, what how he uh, views the elections that just were over, well, as we taped this show last night, but it will be airing on Sunday, and of course it'll be a little dated in that respect. Well, Mike, sure glad to have you back. Thank Thanks. you very much, Ken. Great for your 18th visit. You know, I was just looking. We've done 582 shows, though. Yes. So we've done 564 without you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that may be the miracle of, of, of all is, of this. Yeah, but they weren't as good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, I, yeah, I would yeah. certainly Eight, would agree with that. 18 shows that have tied for well, first on quality. Well, at the rate, of, rate you guys pay, I can retire. <laughs> <laughs> One more show, I can retire to the poorhouse. Well, there you go. <laughs> Well, Election Day. Election Day last Tuesday. Primary Election Day. Yeah, what'd you think? <laughs> I love Election Days. I'm, yeah. I'm an old war horse. You know, the bell rings. I run to the front. Uh, <laughs> uh, very interesting. Uh, obviously, uh, one uh, the, probably the, the biggest upset uh, was uh, Congressman Sullivan being mm -hmm. defeated up in uh, Tulsa in the 1st Congressional District by Bridenstein. And uh, that's one of those races where... Uh, uh, a few months back, a lot of people thought that Congressman Sullivan was in some difficulty, mm -hmm. and then it seemed to kind of right it itself. Yeah. <clears throat> but obviously, uh, Bridenstine came on pretty strong, and the interesting thing is the uh, Sooner Tea Party is trying to claim credit for Bridenstine's victory. Well, Bridenstine, they may have endorsed him, but he was not of that, I mean, he wasn't a, a soulmate with the Sooner Tea Party people. So, uh, interesting there. And mm -hmm. speaking of the Sooner Tea Party, uh, they pretty well took it on the chin in Tuesday's elections. How'd uh, they do? Not very well. I think they had uh, they had two victories, two victories, two of their candidates, including Bridenstine, mm -hmm. uh, won. They only won one legislative race. They've got four runoffs, and they lost 13 of their uh, candidates. And, and most uh, of them were against cases, incumbents, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, incumbent yeah. Republicans. And, and the, the interesting thing is that most of their candidates 
I mean, barely broke double digits. Hmm. A lot of them didn't even make that. There were some of them, you know, four and a half, five percent. And now there were others, obviously, that were much closer. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think uh, I think that may kind of signal the end of the big push by the Sooner well, Tea let me Party, tell you which what is a to me. totally controversial. Group. It's election day, and I leave City Hall about five thirty or six, and I'm because I'm got to get over there and vote. And I'm thinking, God's right after work. Probably going to be a crowd at the election polls. <laughs> I hope the parking lot's not full of cars. It's going to. I don't know how long this is going to take me because I had had dinner plans. Anyway, I pull into the parking lot, and there's hardly any of the cars there. And I see a sign, though. I know I'm at the right place. And so I walk in. There's three election officials and me. And I vote, and I'm the 31st person to vote at my precincts all day. And, it's, and this is at the end of the day. Ann and I voted, Ann and I voted uh, late uh, Tuesday morning. And uh, first of all, we had to find the polling place because they had found uh, the only air-conditioned room they had in the whole building. And here were all the election officials sitting on tables in a circle. <laughs> And we walked in, and I said, well, where's the crowd? And they said, you're it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are, was, what accounts for? Yeah, what, I, what's I, the deal? I, just, there was some there's advertising a lot of, going on. Yeah, but there's a lot of disinterest, and there was not a huge number of statewide races to really attract people. Bob Anthony, of course, dispatched uh, Brooks Mitchell pretty easily, 60, mm -hmm. 40, I guess. As I said, Bob Anthony got his usual 60% of the vote. Yeah. Uh, in in that race, so there wasn't a lot of uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, interest uh, generated statewide, and but you're right, the turnout. I haven't seen any late figures from the election board, but uh, abysmal yeah, turnout. Pretty weak. Uh, yeah, real weak, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's let's talk about uh, you know who won, not individual people, but you know, you, you mentioned the Tea Party, mm -hmm. uh, f you know, may have fought hard, but didn't have a whole lot to show for at the end of the day. How do Republicans and Democrats do? Any any changes in, in seats going forward? Uh, that you see? I know I know it was a primary day. Well, before. they're they're going to be the usual three or four seat change, uh, but I don't I don't see. I mean, I I think end of the day we're going to wind up in November about where we are now in terms of balance in the legislature. Um, and it's going to be, next year is going to be very interesting, particularly on the House side with the new speaker, T.W. Shannon, uh, who has the support of a lot of these people that are identified as Tea Party people, uh, to see what kind of agenda he comes forth. And uh, this whole battle, uh, Mick and Kent, between the uh, purported battle between supporters of the state chamber and supporters of the more conservative agenda, mm -hmm. I think is going to continue to play out. But one of the things, I think most important about this week's primaries was that the majority of those Sooner Tea Party candidates who were anti-chamber didn't get anywhere. So maybe that will take it off the table, uh, you know, as a as just a as a mandate. as an over yeah. as an overriding issue. And yeah. it got to where almost every time you'd hear something out of the Capitol here the last few months, it's been, you know, anti the, the chamber this or the chamber that. And uh, I think that may have gone by the wayside. Representative Terrell ran into some trouble, I guess, in his county commission race. Uh, yeah, it's called an opponent that beat him. Beat him pretty good, too. Really? Uh, was that an incumbent he was running against? No, no, no. That was a wide open, wide open deal, and Terrell ran really what amounted to a distant second. Yeah. And I was not surprised by that at all. Uh, I thought uh, Terrell would never had any traction. Was not able to raise a lot of money, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And Brian Mon coasted a victory as Oklahoma County Commissioner. Yes, very easily. Yeah, yeah sure but did. Brian's putting together a pretty, pretty impressive political resume. Uh, well, he is indeed, and I, you know, I expect bigger things out of him yeah. on down the road. And just like T.W. Shannon, the Speaker of the House, no question in my mind, uh, Speaker Designate Shannon is going to be a congressman from the Fourth District one of these days. Comes from Lawton. Uh, he's a conservative guy. I mean, he's well positioned. He follows the Tom Cole mold. mold. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a protege of Tom's, so uh, yeah, I think he'll be in that seat one day. We've had, you know, after years where it seemed like the the, the Oklahoma Speaker of the House was in office for a long time. Yes, uh, long that's enough true. where yeah. their name penetration, you know, was was pretty big. People mm -hmm. knew who the Speaker of the House was. We've kind of gone through a series here. Um, we have, you know, well, with, yeah, with Lance and Chris, and now <laughs> T.W. Yes. coming in. Mm -hmm. yep. um, look back at at, at Chris. What what you think of his work as Speaker? Oh, of the I House? think overall pretty good. You see, the the, the how. Chris Steele got crossways with so many of these arch conservatives and the Sooner Tea Party people is that he's a moderate guy. He is a guy who believes in, in the art of a compromise. And so many of these Tea Party people, there's no compromise, as you know. It's, you know, our way or the highway. And uh, as a result, they keep running into brick walls like they did Tuesday. People, a lot of people just don't buy into that 
arbitrariness that they see. So you get a guy like Steele, who is uh, believes in compromise, the art of compromise, understands if you're going to get anywhere, at some point you've got to give on, and if you want to stand on a principle, you stand on it, as he has done, in my opinion, uh, and go on down the road. So I think overall his stewardship is, uh, has been pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, his uh, predecessor, uh, Chris Benge, how would you rate him? Uh, I thought uh, Benge was very much the same way. Benge was much, in my mind, uh, even more low-key than Chris Steele, and Chris has been pretty low-key. Mm -hmm. uh, he stepped out when he had to, but I mean, just in terms of just going out and uh, saying things to be saying them, he, he hasn't done that. And uh, it's, uh, it's, I tell you, this, this thing, with the, what people don't realize about leadership positions in the legislature, particularly Speaker of the House, is the enormous power these people wield through the committee <laughs> chairmanships and, you know, the, the legislation they push and legislation they oppose. Mm -hmm. Well, since we're kind of giving out uh, report cards today, let's skip over to the Senate side. Yes. Talk about Brian Bingham and how do you, what kind of a grade do you give Brian on this? Uh, I think he's process? done pretty, I think he's done pretty well. Uh, Marshalling uh, the Republicans over there. Again, there's been a little of that uh, anti-chamber kind of chit-chat going back and forth over there, but not near what it has been on the House side. And a, a high-profile case in uh, the Oklahoma City area was the Clark Jolly and Paul Blair race. Uh, in, absolutely, in yes. And turned out to be not very close at all. Yeah. 20 points between them, 60-40, something like that. Two high-profile candidates, though, Blair, Whoa, because he, you yeah. know, he had a presence first as a football player That's and correct. then as a, as, a, yep. as a pastor. Yep, and, uh, and was, a, was a, as far as the news stations go, kind of a go-to guy for interviews many times mm -hmm. on well, He's been a guest on this show. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, that's one of those, and again, he's a Tea Party guy, uh, Paul Blair, uh, and he's an absolutist. Uh, he, even, you know, in defeat, he said, look, he said, here's, here's how it is, here's what I believe, and, and there's no compromise on this. And uh, Jolly has uh, a reputation somewhat different than that, uh, but obviously uh, the voters in uh, that Senate district pretty comfortable with Clark Jolly and mm -hmm. just really did not accept a lot of the uh, Paul Blair slash Sooner Tea Party argument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots more to talk about, and I hope we can get it all in in this show. Right. We're visiting with Mike McCarville today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb-Greetham. I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology, exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. I don't want to hope for the best. I want to become it. I want you to see my potential. Because I can be more than average. I can be amazing. Because I know the hard way and the right way are one and the same. I will make you proud. And surpass even my own expectations. I will lead. I will lead. I will lead America's energy future. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry. Proud to equip Oklahoma students for greatness. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to The Verdict. We're visiting with Mike McCarville. Let's talk about the second district U.S. Congress race this past year. Well, Tuesday. the entire eastern half of the uh, uh, state of Oklahoma, literally, mm -hmm. 
uh, Mick, and over there, as you know, we had a, a five-way or six-way Republican primary uh, for that, uh, what is going to be the Dan Bourne open seat, Bourne, of course, being a Democrat. And uh, we had, I, th I thought going in, we had three or four of those candidates who, depending on how turnout went, could bubble up to the top or at least be in a runoff. I thought Dakota Wood, a uh, military guy, uh, Mark Wayne Mullen, the plumbing company owner, George Fought, former representative, and uh, Dustin Rowe, the former mayor of Tishomingo. I thought we're all kind of in that mix. Well, as it turns out, it's Mullen and Fought, and, and Mullen with a substantial lead, doing mm -hmm. no small part, I'm certain, to the massive amount of advertising. I mean, this guy's put, what, half a million dollars of his own money into this race? Uh, so I think it's, it's advantage Mullen right now, and uh, we'll see how it plays out. Well, what about the Democratic challenger? Uh, I think on the Democratic side, uh, there were three pretty substantial candidates. Uh, and as it uh, turns out, uh, I think there's going to be some strength there come November. Yeah. So they could I hold on to that seat. Rob Wallace, yeah. Well, if, they could, if, yeah. if not, though, I mean, look at the state. You have, you have Republicans in all eight statewide office holders, and you would have both senators and all five congressional Complete seats. Complete dominance. But, of course, there's, there could be trouble ahead with that, too, because yeah. a lot of people have come to the conclusion that, well, this legislature is dominated by Republicans, Republican governor, statewide Republican officials, yeah. and we didn't get much. I mean, well, that's yeah, the opinion some people have. But it can't go the other way. I mean, there's no more well, the Republicans right. can that's do. Right. I mean, that's yeah, that's that, almost that's a, a complete yeah. victory. That's right. Uh, Are for, there for other the states uh, that have that kind of dominance that you're aware of? Not off the top at of my the head. current not, time. Not now. Not yeah. off, not yeah. no. Not like. And what is amazing to me is if anybody had told me 35, 40 years ago, <laughs> we were going to be at this point. But hey, listen, I remember back when we Republicans get together, we'd meet in a telephone booth. Back yeah. when we had telephone right. booths. Well, right. back then there there was that dominance. Yeah, but you, it was you by could meet at the kitchen table. Yeah. Uh, and uh, boy, you know, if you weren't a Democrat, you didn't get to vote till the general election. <laughs> yeah. And my, how things have changed. Well, you know, in 2006, it was it was a different. Oh, absolutely, culture. it was. Yes, yeah. yeah. It surely was. I mean, it, it changed yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Well, it, it swung it, to the it, it swung it, to the middle, and then it came it back. It started literally the the, gra the the groundswell, in my opinion, began in '94 when Frank Lucas won the third district race and then Jim Inhofe won the uh, the US Senate seat and that was kind of the, the start of the so-called Republican Revolution nationally <clears throat> it took us a while statewide to catch up but I think it was because of the way those guys performed that helped statewide candidates mm -hmm. and just helped the perception of Republicans overall well go ahead I was gonna say let's let's talk nationally now yep. Wisconsin had the recall vote uh, the governor, governor was reinstated yep. it was not recalled well, let's back up a little yep. bit on that then would you trace the controversy just briefly oh, sure. for our viewers why a recall vote anyway well well he, he pushed legislation and, and pushed uh, he's uh, a Republican that's right he is a Republican and he got crossways with <clears throat> excuse me organized labor <clears throat> big time and uh, was they have called everything from a union buster to worse and uh, the unions uh, mounted this uh, recall effort, and uh, along with his political, uh, other political enemies, <clears throat> and uh, finally came to a head, and uh, he emerged victorious, which surprised a lot of people, because Wisconsin is known as one of your more liberal, right. democratic-oriented states, <clears throat> and he's a Republican. But I think it says a lot about Governor Walker too. Very charismatic guy, very plain-spoken guy, and uh, one of those guys you know, you sit down and talk to him. And you get up and you walk off and you think, well, I wish that conversation could have lasted a little longer. It's well, one that, of those guys that strikes mm -hmm. people good. He's on, a, I guess, per, perhaps a long list of people that are occasionally talked about, even for vice president yes. on mm -hmm. the Republican ticket. Well, right now, I think that list is extremely long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just about any elected Republican on a statewide level you want to talk about is going to be on that list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, on, the, uh, on the Wisconsin uh, recall, uh, is that fight over? I mean, it, I think it's over for the time being. Yeah. Now, surely it'll regenerate itself at some point. But I think uh, you know, once you go through something that intense, and you're against somebody like the unions have been up there, and you get beaten and beaten back, it takes a lot of a lot of the, a lot of the sting out of your effort. Mm -hmm. And I, again, to get back to Oklahoma, I think that's one of the things that may have happened to the the Sooner Tea Party uh, and its uh, uh, activism. On Tuesday, it got beat. I mean, it got beat pretty badly, all the way over. So I, 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 that 
it's hard to sustain enthusiasm when you when you know you just you get beat. Well, mm -hmm. Did you get the sense that the Tea Party folks were out knocking on doors and, and really trying to some of them campaign were, for their candidates? Some of them were, but here, here's what I think happened to the Tea Party and some of its candidates. Not all of them, because some of them are pretty good people. But the, the level of uh, venom that was exuded by the primarily the leader of the Sooner Tea Party and the language they used in their attacks on the incumbents just turned a lot of people off. I mean, you know, they just described some incumbent legislators in crude, the crudest possible terms. I mean, they, and, and they would have you believe that they had horns coming out of their head. Well, you can disagree with somebody without believing that they're the devil reincarnate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Center Tea Party would have had us all believe. Right. That these were all people who were just, you know, nasty, lousy human beings. And that's just not the case. Yeah, it really sounded to me, although I just observed it from afar, more like the language you would hear the Tea Party uh, direct toward a Democrat uh, trying. Oh to yeah, win but it was even it was even. But worse it was than within that. their own party. I mean, there was nothing civil about it. Uh, it nothing. It just civility went out the window, and uh, it just it was. I think to a lot of people, it's just discouraging to see the the so-called conversation level descend to that point. I'm still some of the emails, and some of the stuff they included in these newspapers that they circulated in some of these districts, was just. Terrible. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. all, that's it's a trite word, but that yeah. just describes it. Terrible. And in some sense, if you're not a Republican in one of those districts, you didn't see all this. You weren't exposed that's to correct. it. That's correct. That's correct. But but those that were know exactly what you're talking Ex exactly about. Exactly right. And I think that turned a lot of those Republicans off. All right. Let's talk uh, nationally about the presidential race. Yes. If you look at the uh, the national poll, you see that's pretty, pretty <coughs> close. Uh, as it we is. speak, they're mm -hmm. both in the 40s. Uh, but if you look at the Electoral College and the way that might play out, the president might have a slight advantage here in, I think he in does. the summer. I think he does. You know, the, the question a lot of people still have about Mitt Romney, myself included, is uh, whether he's got the, uh, the stick em, uh, when it comes to the final drive. I don't know. Mm -hmm. we, we've not seen it yet, and perhaps we will. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, Obama's obviously got his problems. Uh, and I think the Fast and Furious scandal is going to engulf him even more than it has. And Eric Holder is not going to have, have proven to have been any benefit to him at all. Uh, so I, there's all kinds of things yeah. bubbling out there. We got the, Obamacare, yeah, uh, you the know, Supreme the Court decision. Deal, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and it's, uh, it's just uh, it's the kind of race to me. I think we could do this again in mid-October and be saying, well, how's this looking? <laughs> We'll, put, we'll plan on that. Yeah, because yeah. unless something pops up, <laughs> well, you know, I, it's going to be a kind of a guess. Here's game. ultimately, I think, the president's largest problem. He was elected nearly four years ago because he inspired a lot of people who didn't typically vote to get out and vote. Exactly. And I'm not sure those people are going to go back. They They're were not going to go It back. was almost a one-time deal, and they mm -hmm. were inspired. And now, they may look at it introspectively and say, you know, my life doesn't feel much better. But I just think they were, they were caught up in a movement And some of them now are disillusioned week. because the first thing you got to, and I think this is, this is where the Romney campaign has got to get its act together and the Republican Party is pointing out where Obama has failed to live up to all the great promises he made <coughs> coming up four years ago. Uh, and if they can do that successfully, that mm -hmm. will, a lot of people just say, ah, yeah. you know, I'm but not You know, Romney's not at the top of the list for inspiration either. No, absolutely. And the president was, but I'm not yes. sure he is today. I so you have two that. guys that are really struggling on the inspirational side to get not only their base out, but to get to get people out to the polls. And I think that yeah. get out to vote effort is going to be really interesting to watch that break down. Well, it will be for sure. Yeah. We just got a few seconds left. Any, okay. any parting thoughts? Uh, no vote early and vote often. That's my <laughs> motto. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're and in some of these races, I'm sure there are candidates said, "Oh, I wish my people had done that." <laughs> yeah, we will remind voters if they uh, have an opportunity to vote in a, in a runoff election to please get out and do so. And we'll have Mike McCarville back on in the fall, and we'll talk about the November election. Gents, time. thank you. Pleasure thank you to be again. with you once uh, again. Right. Always, pleasure. Mike McCarville, today's guest on the verdict. Kent and I'll have a final word when we get back. life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. 
Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. In Oklahoma, we enjoy a high quality of life due to good, well-paying jobs. Commercial real estate professionals play a significant role in bringing new businesses and investments to Oklahoma. The commercial real estate community has come together to market Oklahoma's commercial properties nationwide through a free public website, okcommercialproperty.com. We are invested in keeping Oklahoma strong and growing because economic development ensures quality of life. We lived on a family farm. We didn't have other families that lived close to us. Right. And uh, we wanted our kids to grow up being friends. You know? And so when they, when they did grow up and disperse, it wasn't hard mm -hmm. to acclimate to other parts of society mm -hmm. or being a friend. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers wrapping up a show with Mike McCarville. Mike has an uh, incredibly good website. Uh, if you're involved in politics, uh, you probably ought to check it out, tmrccom.blogspot.com. We have a website, too, theverdict.tv. Head there if you'd like to tell us about a show you'd like to see on an upcoming edition. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.